Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad I am too. I hope we can fix any problems that we had left over from last time. And I'm going to do my very best to make sure that that happens. Um, So here I am looking around, looking at my software, looking at everything, wondering if you can hear, wondering what you hear, and um, that's a problem. Because I sure do want to talk to you tonight, so stick with me. I think I've got the uh, issues solved, but it says everything is good, but it's not showing me that... Um, that the sound is going through. So yes, it is going through. I got my trusty assistant listening in to tell me when it's going through and that's great. I'm so happy that it is and I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that nothing awful is happening to the sound. So let me see if I can turn the sound up a little bit. Someone says that it's not loud enough. Um, it's as loud as I can make it according to everything here. So is that better? So many places to look and I want to look at you and talk and yet um, that's, that doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> so we'll just let that be and hope that it is loud enough and that um, you're here and that's what matters. So let's just... Um, Think about this um, this issue that we have here. That um, what we're going to talk about tonight, which is the same thing we tried to talk about last time, but it didn't work um, because we had so many technical glitches. And that topic is why we're reluctant to set boundaries and why it's essential that we do. We absolutely must. And if you have difficulty with boundaries at any time, it could well be that, that you just haven't learned what's essential to do. So at any time, if you have questions, put them in the chat. I'll see them for sure. And um, if you have a comment, certainly put them there too. And we will talk about this very important subject. And you know, why don't we, why don't we have boundaries? Well, there are so many reasons. You know, one of the things that we seem to tend to think is that if we have boundaries, people won't like us. <laughs> that if we tell people who we are and how we want things to be, people will think we're being too assertive. And that could stop us from setting boundaries. Has anybody ever felt that way? Because that's certainly something that can happen. That maybe they won't like us. Maybe I should, you know, be really accepting. Maybe I should be compromising all the time. Maybe I should be more available. Maybe I should give everybody more than, than the right space. And maybe they'll like me. Or maybe things will work better. Or maybe we'll just do it their way. And what happens is we get lost. We get totally lost lost in the process. So we need to think about these things. And tonight is the night to think about those things. So please say hello in the chat. Let me know that you're here. I keep one eye on that as much as I can so that we can do a good job of answering your questions. So boundaries are essential because they're like our skin. You know, our skin tells us where we stop and start. And that's an important thing to know. Our skin is a boundary. And yet, we need to set boundaries emotionally. And sometimes we need to set boundaries physically. And that's all things that we want to talk about tonight. How to set boundaries with your words. How to set boundaries and then make them stick. And if they don't stick, what to do about setting consequences? Because you're certainly going to need that too. 
So you can see how very important boundaries are and that we may be reluctant to set them, as I said, because we don't think it's very nice. Hi, Roy. Welcome to the program. Maybe we don't think it's very nice to set a boundary because maybe somebody will be offended. Maybe they won't like us. Maybe they'll walk away. Maybe they'll think we're harsh. Maybe they'll think we're too assertive. But what if I told you that confidence is what's demonstrated by setting a boundary? And it shows that you care about yourself. You care about yourself well, and you're willing to set a boundary. Yes, I do remember you. That's a long time ago, but welcome to the program, Roy. I'm glad you're here. And please, anybody, sign in and let me know that you're here. I'd love to see your name in the chat. So these boundaries, so we need to be able to clarify them. We need to know how to do that. We need to know how to express them. We need to know how to maintain them once we've expressed them. Then we need to know what to do if we need to set a consequence and then what to do after we've set that consequence. And when we do that, you'll feel confident. You know, and for a little while, it might seem really strange. It might seem like out of your comfort zone. But you'll soon see that people appreciate this. They truly do appreciate this. And it may not, they may not respond as though they appreciate it, but they appreciate it in this way. They know where they stand. And some people don't want to stand there. And that's why you need to set a boundary, because you need to be able to say, no, nope, you stand over there. Don't get so close. Don't be in my space. And that's what a boundary is all about. So a boundary is the moment where it says, this is me and this is what's not me. And that boundary is clear there. It's where I end and where you begin. What I own and take responsibility for and what I do not own and do not take responsibility for. And that's extremely useful. So let's think of it in a very clear metaphor. Let's think of you being a house and you have a piece of property and you're going to put a fence around it because you want to be very clear. I will mow the yard up to here, but I won't mow the yard out there. I will take care of everything inside, but I will not take care of things outside. So I have a fence and it's very clear what my responsibility is. And then if I'm smart, and I hope everybody does, you put a gate or two in the fence so that you can let people in that you want to let in and closer. And you can put people out that you want to keep out and further away. So you can let the good in and you can let the not so good out. And that's very important. So just think about it, where my yard ends and where your yard begins, and I control the gate. You don't control the gate. I control my gates. So if you hold that metaphor, that might be helpful to you. And so in your own life, you need to know the edges, just like you need to know the edges of your property so that you can express them. You know, there's a reason that when you go to the property office and you register your property, it is very, very clear those parameters, the exact measurements, the exact space that is yours. And that's what I'm inviting you to consider being able to give voice to in your life. So is this something that you're doing already? Just put it in the chat if you are. Because you may feel good already about your boundaries. That may feel like you're already in that in that frame of mind where you're setting them. What's your experience with that? Love to hear that. Put it in the chat so that you have some experience with either having porous boundaries where people could just kind of walk over them as though you don't have a fence. You know, that kind of thing in subdivisions where nobody has a fence. You don't know where the yard ends and, you, and the other begins. But if you go into the neighbor's yard, they don't like it. But you didn't know that that was the neighbor's yard. <laughs> you know, that's a very useful metaphor for us when we're talking about this kind of thing. And uh, I hope you'll think about that clearly. Because we are responsible for our yard. Nobody else is responsible for our yard. And we're responsible for ourselves in that yard. But then, not beyond that. 
not beyond that. And we need to be able to give voice to what is within the yard and what is outside of the yard. And we need to have those fences and we need to have those gates in good working order. And <clears throat> if you've ever had abuse in your life, you have had your boundaries trampled. No question about it. You have had your boundaries trampled. And when you have had boundaries trampled, especially when you're young, they don't usually come back up. They don't do it of their own volition because you never learned how to build that fence. So now as an adult, it's required to have and build that fence to make it sturdy and to have a good gate or two so that you can let people in. And you need to know that those boundaries will allow you to feel much safer than you do where people can get too close, walk all over, trample you, maybe not respect you. So, you know, as I said, we have skin and that's one kind of boundary, but our words are also a boundary. And words like no, did you know that no is a full sentence? It really is. I mean, if you don't want to do something, do you really have to explain to another human being why you don't want to do that? Well, if they're outside your boundaries, you definitely don't have to explain it. If they're inside your fence, you let them in with your gate, you may want to explain because they're closer to you and you care because they're within your responsibility. But if they're outside, no. And therefore, no is a full sentence. And sometimes we're afraid to say no because as small children, we really needed those giants to keep us alive. So if we ever said no, which of course every child goes through a period of doing that, but if we continued to say no, the giants didn't like it very well. So we may have learned not to say no anymore. We may have learned to turn ourselves into a pretzel or lie down and be a doormat. And that is never a good way to be. That's never how we want to be, is it? doesn't feel good. And that's not what we're here to do. That's not why you were given birth. That's not why you came into this world to let other people run all over you, trample you down, maybe make yourself into a pretzel or a doormat. What? So that people will be pleased and happy? No. And if you've been abused, you can see directly why you didn't get a chance to create boundaries. And so now is the time. Now is definitely the time. So remember that you can put your uh, questions in the chat because this show is all about answering your questions. So just let me say, if you haven't been there before, please go to my website at For Relationship Help, just like the name of the show, ForRelationshipHelp.com. So much there for you. I even have a membership site called Optimize Circles. So when you go to forrelationshiphelp.com slash circles, you can see the membership. And what's in there for you are three different tiers of membership. And the first one is that you can engage in my discussion forums completely off social media. Isn't that cool? Because you can have complete safety. Nobody's forming fake profiles over there. Um, this is a safe place for you to engage in conversation, share what's going on with you, ask your questions. I'm in there all the time answering questions. At the second level, you get access to all the videos. Oh, and at the first level, you get my 21 Steps to Empowered Emotional Savvy email course over six weeks. And you get access to a few videos. Second level, you get access to way more videos and to webinars. And every month, there's a special webinar for those people who register. And then at the third level, you get all that, plus you get two group Ask Me Anything calls a month. So there's lots there for you. If you need more interaction, if you want more from that, please do um, find it over there at forrelationshiphelp.com slash circles. So when we don't have boundaries, what happens? We feel wronged, we feel unhappy, and inside we start to become resentful. So there's a very good reason for creating boundaries. 
a very good reason why you would want to do that so that you don't end up feeling resentful. Because when you don't have good boundaries, you feel used often. You don't want to feel that way, do you? I mean, that is not a great place to be. So when we build that resentment, we start then saying, oh, I've got resentment. Maybe I'm a bad person. We start to beat ourselves up and then, wow, we're going even further down. So there's another reason for having good, strong boundaries that will really help you. And the reluctance to set them is simply because you want people to like you. But the actual fact is the reverse is true. When you set boundaries, you'll have the better people around you. People who respect you and listen to you and are interested in you, curious about you and respectful of you. And those people will become more trustworthy folks too. So all of those pieces are important for you. You know, you don't you don't feel pressured by abusers and then continue to take the blame and pressure yourself if you're wise. It is not you who's doing the abuse until you start saying to yourself what abusers said to you. When you start taking on their inner dialogue. So instead of doing that, you want to set some clear boundaries. I like this. I don't like that. I prefer this, not that. I do this, I don't do that. Simple, simple boundaries. And how do you express it if you want to be even more clear? You know, uh, many times I'm talking to clients all over the world because I work through video conferencing and they say, well, what do I say? How do I say it? What gets the message across? Well, I can't guarantee it'll get the message across on the first time out. But one of the things that you can do is to set a boundary like this. I prefer it when this happens. Could we make an agreement that that could work for us? That's a nice way to set a boundary. I'm just saying, I prefer this. And then you might say, and what do you prefer? Can we find a middle ground? So that's one way that you can do it. For other people who trample your boundaries, you may have to be a little stronger and you have, may have to say, this is okay with me. This is what I prefer and make it very, very clear. And that's that. Like, that is my boundary. I am not going to negotiate with you in any way. That is my boundary is, you know what, when people want to talk with me, I'd like them to make an appointment. That's a kind of obvious boundary. But what's a less obvious boundary? I feel comfortable when people stay three feet away from me and I can see their faces. That's important to me because I have previously been threatened. Could we make an agreement to do that? You're setting a boundary. And then you give the person the opportunity to say yes or no so that you can make a decision if you want to be around that person. And if you're with a hijackal, you know, the people that I talk about all the time, the particularly difficult people, they're not interested in your boundary, but you're not setting the boundary for them. You're setting the boundary to empower yourself, to stake your claim in the world. You say, this is me. This is what I prefer. This is what I want. This is how I need it to be. And you're affirming that and empowering yourself. And you don't do it in any nasty way. You just say, uh, it's not all right with me to be yelled at. And I will leave the room if it continues. You don't put any energy behind it, any screaming or yelling or whatever. You just simply say what your boundary is and then you take steps. So if your boundary is, I, I will not be yelled at and if yelling occurs, I will leave the room. You've already put somebody on notice that I'm not sticking around for that behavior. And that's fine. Now, Yes, I've worked with people who would love to do that because they will interpret my words as if I think the other person is even yelling inside, then I'll walk away. No, we got to be honest about that. If someone actually has a raised voice that is somewhat disturbing and threatening, I'm not going to stick around for it. Are you? No, it's not okay. 
But I will go the extra mile and I might say, wow, you've really upset about that. I really get that. But what's important to me is that we have a conversation about it, not a yelling match. Can we do that? So that you begin to set those boundaries. And in the beginning with a hijackle, you are 100% doing it just to say, this is where I end and you begin. <laughs> and stay away from where I am in that regard. It's a clear boundary. You can't come in my gate. That's where the fence is. So very important to do and be very clear. Be very clear. Don't, don't leave it wishy-washy in any way person needs to understand exactly. You may ask them, do you have any questions? Is there anything else you need to know about how I prefer to be treated or what works for me or what doesn't work for me? And so your words define your property for other people. This is how I prefer to communicate my preferences, my feelings, my thoughts, my needs, my wants. I can set boundaries around all of those things. Now remember, if you have any questions, even if they're not on the topic of boundaries, you're quite welcome to put them in the chat. And I will respond to them because this is our time together each week. And I'm so sorry that last week was messed up because I know that there were eight people on the line and I couldn't get to you. And I'm so sorry. But I'm glad that you people are here now and that you will hopefully enjoy coming each week and that you'll invite people who may need to hear these things too. Because this is our time to just chat, to uh, get questions answered and have opportunity to, to say what's going on for you. So just put it in the chat. I can see that. So sometimes you need to get physical distance from people, right? You know, sometimes people encroach on your physical space so badly. You know, there's a reason that we have that phrase in our language that says, well, he really got in my face, right? Right up, right there. And we don't like that. But that's a power move to get in someone's face. And so we need to set physical boundaries. And they're very, very difficult if you're with a hijackal. Very difficult because they like to have power over you. They like to have control of the situation. But we have to find a way to get our fences up. And those fences have to be sturdy and they have to lock. And so we must find that. And we must have those fences. And sometimes you have to create not only emotional distance but physical distance. You know, I've worked with people who have been in relationship with hijackals and it would come to the place where someone would express their boundary and they would say, let's use the example I just used, I will not be yelled at. I will leave the room if yelling continues. And they do that for a little bit and they leave the room, but the person follows them. And so maybe the consequence has to be, I will leave the house if that happens. Or I will go and stay at so-and-so's house for the evening if I get yelled at. Maybe you have to have consequences that are greater than that. Now, I always tell people in relationships when I'm helping them with their relationship, never ever threaten something that you are not prepared to follow through on. Because one of the things hijackals do is they threaten to hurt you. They threaten to divorce you. They threaten to leave you. They threaten all these things. Now, if they threaten to touch you, threaten to hurt you, that's when you call 911. It's really important to do that because threats are a form of assault. And you must think about that. But if, in fact, they are threatening to divorce you, that's a very common hijackal move. In fact, it's a very common relationship move when people are not getting along very well. They simply threaten to leave. They think that if they threaten to leave, then you'll become the supplicant person saying, oh, please don't leave, please don't leave, I'll, I'll, I'll do what you want. That's true power over, don't enable them. Don't condone the behavior. Don't enable the behavior. Have a boundary. 
know exactly how to express it and be very clear about it. So you may have to create emotional space, but you may also have to create physical space. And that may have to get geologically, geographically larger, maybe geologically too. I don't know. You could climb a mountain or go into a cave, but geographically, you may have to create some distance. Sometimes when people are leaving hijackles, they really do have to go quite a, quite a ways away in order to have a life that they can feel safe in. So there have to be consequences to your boundaries at some point. In the beginning, just express them. See if a person with goodwill will hear them, be interested in them. Use them to create an emotionally mature relationship. But if you're with somebody who will not and wants to trample your boundaries, you will soon find yourself adding consequences to them. And that's really important because you don't want to be manipulated. And, you know, good boundaries sometimes need an added, an, an added piece on the fence, a little bit of barbed wire to let people know that you're serious. And don't be afraid to do that, especially with people who want to maintain control over you or have power over you or think they do, and they start to threaten. So, you know, keep the barbed wire handy if you are with a hijackal, because you're going to need that. And don't be manipulated by your compassion because, you know, they want to tug at your heartstrings. If you're with a covert hijackal, they always want you to feel guilty. They want you to feel sorry for them. They want you to feel like nobody understands them and you could be the person who could rush in and understand them. And what they're really doing is trying to draw you into their drama by making you feel sorry for them or feel like you haven't done enough for them, or feel like you've been um, too judgmental of them. And then they sit there with that game, with that game face on. Well, you know, I never get to do anything. You know, you don't even want me to see my family. You know, ain't it awful? He done me wrong. All of that kind of thing. And um, it's hard to know that you need to have boundaries at that point because you're drawn. You want to move toward them. You want to say, oh, let me nurture you more. Let me be more compassionate. Let me uh, understand what's happened to you. And then you disappear. You become all about them. You become enmeshed in what it is that they need and want. And you disappear. No. We need to have equity. Remember, I've talked about it before. There are three hallmarks of a healthy relationship, any relationship. Equality, reciprocity, and mutuality. And if there aren't those three things, you will not ever have an emotionally mature relationship. Absolutely and for sure. So you need to be understanding that you can set boundaries. And not only that, it is healthy to set boundaries. And you need to tend to your fence, keep your gates working, and make sure that you are in charge of who opens and closes the gates. So those are the things that I wanted to talk to you about tonight about boundaries. I'm going to open it now for questions. And if there aren't any questions on any subject, then we'll leave it there for the evening. But I'll give you a minute or two to put the questions in. And I invite you once again to go to fourrelationshiphelp.com and see what's there for you. There's lots of things. Come on over and join the membership circles. Just go to fourrelationshiphelp.com slash circles. And you'll find it when you're on the home page anyway. So any questions, any comments before we end tonight? All right. Well, seeing nothing, I just wanted to share those things with you. I hope it will inspire and motivate you to think about your boundaries, whether or not you have them or you're expressing them regularly enough or you're expressing them firmly enough. And then if they're firm enough, do they need to have consequences? And remember, if you're with a hijackal, you're doing that for yourself. You are empowering yourself to say what you need and want clearly. And that's a big step. And that's an important step. So having boundaries is essential. And I really invite you to look at that. See how they're working for you. See if you need to mend your fences a little bit on your side. Get them straightened up and shored up. And make sure your gates are in good working order. So until next week, 
And when I hope you'll be back, and I hope you'll tell a few friends to come along too, I wish you well. Talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye.